Hello, and welcome to part 2 of the Delay Designer tutorial with me, Ed the Shed. My name is Ed, but I'm not a shed. In the last tutorial we covered the basics of the Delay Designer and most of the parameters. Today I will explain the tap function and briefly cover the master section at the end also. Right. Let's get started. Now. Just before I get into explaining the tap mode, I will quickly go through the sync mode which is located just above, here. You can either use tap mode, or sync mode, but never the two together. Here is why. Sync mode will snap all of your delayed signal points to a grid whereas tap mode will allow you to decide exactly when you want the delays to be by tapping them in, in real time. So, going back to sync mode just for now, there are three options here. These are, sync on slash off, grid and swing. Grid, lets you choose what resolution you want the grid to be in, or in other words it lets you choose how many markers you want on your timeline. So at the moment it's on 8th notes but if I choose 16th notes instead then I should have twice as many points to choose from. Let's give that a go now. So you should have noticed that new markers appeared along the timeline. These markers show you where you can insert more delays. The next parameter is the swing. Now, you might have seen this swing function before, because it is used in other plugins. What swing does is it moves each delayed signal ever so slightly to the left or right of the point it is on. This basically shifts everything just slightly off its grid marker which gives everything a more natural feel and if you apply lots of swing it can give you some really gorgeous shuffle to your delay. In nearly every garage song you have ever heard they will have used swing, and it is this. That gives the garage beat its skittery feeling. Tune in later for my ultra beat tutorial if you want to learn how to make some sick ass garage beats, again using the swing function. Right I am going on like an old woman, I will show you what the swing sounds like with values below 50% and the values above it and you can hear the difference, here we go. Hopefully you heard the difference there, however the drum loop I am using does not have any swing applied to it, so the delay sounds unmatched to the drum loop. If I applied the same amount of swing to my drum loop then the two sounds would gel together much more nicely so bear that in mind when you want to use the swing function. Ok let's talk about the tap function now. This function is more suited to the producers that prefer to be a bit more hands-on with their production and those that prefer messing with real knobs as opposed to virtual ones. It works very simply. You press the start button once to start recording your delay pattern and then every time after that to add in a new delayed signal. When you have finished your pattern you can click on the last tap button and this will stop the recording. Right, let's try and record a little something special then. That sounds magical. Right, now I am going to show you a nifty little trick. 
If you want to edit multiple delays at the same time as well as having a nice even and gradual change across them there is a very simple way. In the main blue section, simply hold the command button and then click just once, and then a small cross icon should appear like this. You can now drag this across your bars to make an even cut across them all and then click one more time to make it official. Boom. So, with this tool you can create some really accurate and professional sounding slopes on your delays, which should impress all the girls at school. The tap parameter below is there for those of you who prefer to program values in themselves instead of drawing it in. I have a friend called Ben the Hen who much prefers doing it this way, so each to their own. Right I will now have a little mess about with the cross cut tool that I just showed you so you can see how quickly you can achieve some cool results. Here we go. So in no time or thought at all, I have made an interesting delay effect which I can use in my own pumping tunes. Now, let's just wrap this shiznit up and talk about the master quickly. The feedback button allows you to select whether or not you want any feedback to be happening, and the drop down menu below it lets you choose which tap you want the feedback to start happening. The knob below that is the feedback gain so you can make it louder and then below that again are the wet and dry mix faders. If you are still watching this video then well done. You hopefully now know enough to go and try some mad delay effects of your own. If you didn't fully get it the first time then don't worry because I'll be here all day and all night just for you because I really really care and I would hate to think that you would still have to use the presets supplied. Oh no oh no, you are much better than that, and you know it. Thanks for watching and see you next time.